What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another dope edition of Define Your Legacy. All right, I'm your host, this Elijah McBee. And before we tap into today's episode, just want to shout out the online store for Define Your Legacy, all right, which can be found at the link in the description of this episode. All right, we have t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, and a whole lot more. All right, so feel free to check out the link in the description of this episode, all right? And just like that, we got my man Tommy on the show. What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? Yes, sir. What's going on, Thie, man? Glad to be here. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So um, if you could, man, just introduce yourself, right, and tell the world who you are and what it is that you do. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my name is Thomas Ortiz. You know, people that know me call me Tommy. Um, so I'm from Hartford, Connecticut. I uh, went to school in Hartford um, all the way up until uh, my senior, well, actually till sixth through ninth. Then I went to uh, East Catholic for my 10th and 11th grade year, and I finished up my 12th grade year at Windsor High. Um, after that, went to college, um, went to Xavier University of Louisiana in New Orleans. Uh, it's an HBCU. Um, I majored in pharmacy. And um, just last year, I received my PharmD, which is my uh, doctorate of pharmacy degree. And uh, right now, I'm working as a pharmacist with the company Walgreens. Uh, so I'm fairly new there and, uh, you know, enjoying the experience so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And and for those that may not know out there, you know, you and I went to high school together, right? We went to school together and stuff like right, that. And right. so um, first thing for, before we even tap into the, the question, just want to say, you know, um, I'm happy for you, man. Congratulations. Um, Appreciate it, bro. You know, it, it's crazy to see, you know, everyone kind of grow, growing up now and, and, and you know, um, heading down the right path. I mean, I think we all knew. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, we would all head down the right path, but um, just to kind of see it all come to fruition, definitely, definitely happy for you. Definitely, um, for sure. Appreciate it, bro. No doubt, no doubt. So how did you get started in that, though, right? I, I know you said um, you went to school for it, of course, in the beginning, but what made you want to go to school for that? Man, so the motivation actually had nothing to do with the job itself. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know when, when, when those questions started getting asked, you know, around like 10th, 11th grade, you know, what are you going to do in college, you know? Um, I didn't really put any thought to it, uh, but the motivation behind it was uh, my grandfather was a pharmacist. My my dad's father, he was a pharmacist. He owned his own pharmacy in in New Orleans, and um, so I just kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps and uh, continue his legacy. Mm. And um, yeah, that was the motivation, really. Yeah, mm. yeah, and so too, obviously, with the name of the show being "Define a Legacy," it's dope to hear right. that because obviously that's that's family related, right? right. But was something like this ever introduced to you um, early on outside of the family? Like, was it ever introduced to you um, at school or like, did you ever hear about it at a, at a local event or was it something that you really just saw internally and that's what made you want to go down that route? Yeah, it was more of an internal thing um, with the family, with the family thing, uh, you know, um, and, and, and honestly, you know, I did my research. I've seen that, you know, the pay the pay is decent so especially during times like this where inflation is you know inflation and all that is going on um i'm you know i i'm glad i made that decision because you know it gives you some some wiggle room there and um not only that but being able to make sure my family's you know family straight too you know being able to you know be there for them whenever they need it stuff like that yeah and and you did you have this thought process like when you were in high school like as a as a as a like a teenager as well I did. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, definitely had the thoughts, you know, would I be able to get myself for sure. But other than that, the real motivation was to be able to make sure my mom's was straight, sister was straight. I got two little uh, siblings now as well. Twins, they two years old. So being being able to, you know, be there for them. But also just outside of what I can do with, with that, also just being able to do something that um, I never seen before, really, you know, around me um uh and and it's something positive you know it's it's something that's not you know what you kind of would typically see from you know kind of where we're from you know yeah stuff like yeah that. and it, it, is that tough to 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 deal with originally because i mean i know you mentioned you went to an hbcu but again right. to your to your previous point the idea of there may not be a lot of black pharmacists was so was that something that you had to to deal with Man, so, uh, man, I didn't really know, like I said, I didn't really have any real thoughts about what pharmacy and pharmacist, what it really was, you know, what a pharmacist really was. But when I got to Xavier, they're known for producing pharmacists. 
and being that it's a HBCU, it's gonna it's actually they produce a lot of black pharmacists, you know. So being there, it didn't it didn't um it didn't really feel weird to be taking that type of route, you know, because there was a lot of us, you know, in that in that lane. So it felt like a like you know normal, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Did, did you uh so did you know anyone down there at first? Like did you you know was it just you? Like did you have any family down there? I'm yeah, sure yeah. like when you were down there you met some people, but like before you made that decision to go, right, did you? Right. Yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah, I, I got, actually got a lot of family out, out in New Orleans um, mm-hmm. and uh, Louisiana in general, not just New Orleans, but in Baton Rouge. So because my dad is born and raised in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got a lot of family on his side that's in New Orleans. And my mom actually grew up in Baton Rouge up until the age around 13, 14, where she moved to Connecticut. But so I got a lot of family on her side on that over there in uh, Baton Rouge as well. So uh, I had a lot of folks that I knew out there. and. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, so met met some more people out there. Yeah, well. and so when we talk about now, obviously earlier in your life, um, I don't know if you told people your dreams or aspirations, but if you did, yeah. if you told other people right that you want to be a pharmacist, right, did you ever receive any type of reaction? Um, not 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 much, not really. Um, because I kind of didn't really tell. It wasn't something that I talked about honestly. Um, it was just a real thought um to myself and maybe amongst my family um but um to be honest it, it was one of those things where at one point I said I wanted to be a pharmacist and then I ended up changing I actually was like I'm gonna do business and then mm-hmm. because I, I actually thought you know I could go to college major in business get a degree in business and then I'll end up owning my own business one day I thought it was that simple <laughs> but, but it's it's not really that simple but uh my dad actually was the one who told me hey man you know, with that pharmacy, that route, it's more secure. You know, you're more likely to be able to, you know, keep a job and, you know, stuff like that. So I put that thought into it. And mm. you know, yeah, that's when I stuck with it. Yeah. So it, it sounds like too, like you found your lane. Right. right. So talk to me about that too. It's like, you didn't try to be like anybody else. You understood what, what your path was. And not to say that, you know, you wouldn't have been successful going the business route, but at the same time you went, you know, towards what you feel like you were meant to do and what it is that you wanted to do as opposed to copying or imitating someone else. So what does that mean to you to know that you did it your way and are still doing it your way? Right. And now that means, that means a whole lot. That means, it means a lot to me. Um, it makes me proud of myself for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, one of my bros, one of the, one of the guys ended up telling me one day, man, that he was, he was proud of me because, you know, I, he says I make it look easy, you know, but he knows how hard it is and, he said he's proud that I never faked it, you know. I, mm. I just did what I had to do and, uh, you know, made it happen. But, yeah, for sure, it makes me feel good, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm able to be something that not only am I proud of, but that my family could be proud of and um, that others can hopefully, you know, look at me, see, you know, and, and try to, you know, take some type of, um, some, some inspiration from it, you know, to stay on the right path, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and 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 how how old are you right now? How old are you? So I'm 25. You're 25. All right. So, yeah. what would you say to the 15 year old Tommy? What what would you mm-hmm. say to the you 10 years ago? You know, and everything you know now, right? The the, the yeah. path that you've taken, you know, knowing that you reach a certain uh, level of success, and obviously, again, still continue on that path. But of course, yeah. you had to start somewhere. And I'm sure it started before the age of 15, of course. But for now, for this question, what would you say to the to the 15 year old you? To be honest, I would tell him tighten up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it kind of, you know, looking at where I am now, yes, you know, I'm all right. But um, the 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 path that you know could have been a lot more smoother if I would have tightened up a little earlier. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this was a little more focused um, and, you know, but, but, you know, enjoy life at the same time for sure. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like I said, it, it was 10 years ago, so you were 15. So, but I asked that question to kind of put everything into perspective, but this one, all yeah. right, is a little bit more recent. Okay. What would you tell the you from just one year ago? Cause now, you know, that was when you were 24 and he's a grown man. So, so 15 right. is like, okay, you know, you're still trying to, 
figure things out or whatnot. But now, just one year ago. Just one year ago. Man, um, so that was fresh off the graduation. Um, just graduated. I, so after graduation, um, I, that was when I had to prepare for licensure examinations to actually be able to practice as a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of where my mind was and I was worried about if I was gonna be able to pass. Um, so, um, you know, I might've, I might've been a little worried about that. So I'll probably tell myself, Hey, it's going to be all right. You mm -hmm. know, just do your part. Um, mm -hmm. and I, and I did tell myself that, but I, I would definitely just give myself that extra reassurance. Like, yo, just do your part. And it's all going to fall into place, you know, um, as long as you do what you have to do, there's no reason for you to worry, you know, whatever happens is supposed to happen, you know? Mm. So, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's real. So I think, you know, even going off of that story, it's like you have to control what you can control, right? Right. There's certain things in life that we have no power over, but the things that you can handle and deal with, make sure you take care of those things and then let the, you know, pieces right. fall wherever they, they may. Yeah, um, right. But, but, that, but that's true, though, you know, especially to and, and I asked the age thing just to kind of, again, for more context um, mm -hmm. to let people know that, you know, you're still young and in your 20s. Um, mm -hmm. But do you ever notice um, the age range, if you will, of other pharmacists? Have you have you seen any um, gap or, or anything like that? Oh, yeah. So to be honest, um, the only so so at my store that I work at specifically. The only other pharmacists, um, they're they're older. You know, the, the other pharmacists are older. They're probably in their forties, fifties, you know, sixties. Uh, um, the only young, the only pharmacist my age that I know graduated with me, or mm. a couple years before, or maybe you know, just not yeah. graduated. So it's, it's it's definitely different to see somebody my age, you know, um, be a pharmacist. Um, but that's what you know. You're you're going to see more of that nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I know, of course, you know, you went to an HBCU, but even outside of that, have you seen um, any other African-American pharmacists? Um, nah, I, I haven't. No, nah. not with my own eyes, at least like in person. No, no. Nah. Yeah, but I know they're out. Yeah, of course. I mean, I well, know of course. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're friend. definitely out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So. Yeah. What does that um, mean to you then? You know, the, the, the potential possibility of you being an actual trip. Like, like, do you ever feel pressure? You know, like, do you ever feel like you have to put on for um, a certain culture? Obviously, you know, you be you, who you right, are. Right. And day, you know, you protect your last name at the end of the day. That's but do you ever right. feel like, all right, you know, because obviously, you know, as, as black men, sometimes there's, there's weight and, and added pressure. But do you ever feel that way at all? Uh, I want to say the, uh, I don't really feel pressure. I would say more so I feel the responsibility yeah. to, um, you know, make sure, because like you pointed out, protect your last name, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm big on that, you know, because I'm not just representing myself. I'm representing my family. I'm representing my people as well, you know what I'm saying? So I carry that with me for sure, you know. So, where I, you know, at the job, I carry myself a certain way. Outside of the job, I carry myself a certain way. Even within my family and friends, you know, I carry myself a certain way because, you know, you, you got to lead, you know, at the end of the day as a man. Um, so, yeah, I definitely feel that responsibility for sure. And I, I, I try to hold on to that and hold myself accountable for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, talk, and talk to me too, you know, I like the, any of that, you know, you talk about holding yourself accountable. Yeah. You know, you hold yourself to, to highest standard. Let me ask them, why is that? Why would you, why would you hold yourself to high standard? Um, being, just wanting to be, the, you know, uh, in the pursuit to be the man that I want to be um, in order to get there. I know I got to do what I got to do to get there. And that's part of it, you know, being accountable, holding myself accountable. And in today's world, when you look around, there's a lot of, the lines have been blurred to be, you know, and, and you know, I understand, you know, today's world is, is, is kind of, you know, you see a lot of things, you know, uh, but, so with that being said, it's kind of just something that uh that I tell myself and that my pops also told me, you know, be, you got to be different than everybody else. You know, everybody going this way, you better off probably going that way. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, I've understood the importance of that. Um, so that's why, you know, yeah, for sure, I hold on to the, I hold myself accountable in that aspect. 
Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think that's, you know, obviously very, very important too. It's like, yeah. I always say like, I put a lot of pressure on myself because I know what I'm capable of. Right. You know, it doesn't come from a place of, you know, being cocky or anything like that. But I think when you have high expectations for yourself, it's usually because you know that you can get a lot of stuff done. Right. Um, and so, yeah. you know, one thing again, too, I'll bring up the age again. Um, how essential do you think it's been for you to take advantage of the opportunity in front of you? Right. The idea that like you haven't waited. And obviously this is something that you have to go to school for. Mm-hmm. Right. But even still, um, you know, utilizing the, the knowledge and the education that you've been able to receive. Um, so how, how has that dynamic been for you? Man, I've, I've in the beginning, when I first got to school, um, for one, I, I didn't, I did actually didn't want to go. I actually didn't want to go to uh, New Orleans, to mm-hmm. be honest. I wanted to stay home where I was comfortable. So, you know, that's where life was at, you know. Although I had family out here, you know, what was going on back back home was more important to me. Um, so I say that to say when I got to New Orleans, the whole aspect of uh, me understanding what I was in, the opportunity that I was having, it, it wasn't clicking for me in the beginning. I wasn't appreciating it at all, to be honest, because I was so focused on the fact that I didn't want to be out there. I want to go back home to stand the third. Um, but over time, um, once I started, I don't know, using my brain a little more, I started to understand that what I was doing and where I was headed was um, was not typical, you know, for, you know, for somebody uh, at my age, you know, where we're from, you don't really see, you know, a lot of it, you know. So, um, yeah, I ended up definitely appreciating it more, um, whether I like studying or not, <laughs> you know, it was it was something like, I got to do what I got to do, whether I like it or not. It's about dis- being disciplined because I know what it is going to end up being, you know, what it's going to end up doing for me. So mm. kept my, you know, that was my attention. That was my mindset. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good point, too. I mean, because there's a, a life lesson in that. It's like, obviously, you know, we as human beings, we have long term goals, right? We have things that we want to accomplish, whether that be years, decades, whatever. But right. I think over the course of that journey, right, we understand there's going to be ups as well as downs. But weathering the storm, right, is just as important as celebrating the wins. Right, uh, right. And that's not always easy, you know, right. but has that been something that you've um, dealt with, you know, or, or just, you know, overcame? It's like, because I'm sure, like, I've never hmm. uh, tried to be a pharmacist, but if I had to guess, there had to have been, like, one day or something that you feel like, okay, th- there, here's a tough moment in my life, but here's how I plan on attacking it and overcoming it. Did you ever have to deal with something like that? Man, it was days. Man, it was probably like a over a year to be honest. Where it mm. was, it was, it was, it was just me to be like, you know, because uh, mm. because for one, um, I'm I'm away from home. You know, my 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 world was at home. You know, my mom, my my pops, my friends, my family, and um, that was the norm. But then being away from home, you know, it hit me hard because I I, I wasn't around that no more. So. And then I wasn't, I wasn't too open into meeting new people, to be honest. That was, you know, I was more so to myself. So there was days where it was just me, you know, and it was probably like that for a while. Like I said, it was like, a, you know, probably like a year where it was just me, school, you know, just doing what I had to do. But um, so, yeah, there was, there was those times where, um, yeah, it was, it was like some, you know, it was tough. It was some tough times where, you know, dealing with stuff and then on top of that, still having to maintain school. You know, um, yeah. So you know, I ran into them that them days, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, talk to me too a little bit more about the the just me times. The only reason why yeah. I ask that because I'm sure there's people out there, right, who may be dealing with something similar, right? Yeah. Whether it's you know starting a business, going to school, um, being a parent, whatever the case may be, where it's like yeah. you look to your left, you look to your right, you know, you may go on social media, or whatever, but you really feel like, all right, it has to be me. Yeah. Right. Like I have to be the one that digs myself out of the situation. I have to be the one that really gets on my grind. So um, how is how, how do you feel about that? Right. The, the, the just me moments in your life. Yeah, they I feel like um, they, they might have been tough in that moment where I would have been like, man, you know, I'm feeling lonely. Mm. But 
at the end of the day, I was always all right because I, I always could pick up the phone. You know, I'm blessed yeah. enough to be able to pick up the phone, call my mom, call my dad, call the homies, call my sister if I need to. And I also had a couple of friends that was out there in New Orleans with me. Not many, but a couple that if I, you know, so I wasn't like completely lonely, right, no, yeah, yeah. you know. But um, but yeah, there was still a lot of nights where I was to myself, but they were necessary because it gave me time to think and it provided me with a lot of clarity. Um, like I said, I, I ended up understanding more of what was for me, who was for me and what wasn't, who wasn't, stuff like stuff like that. Um, and also just, under, you know, talking to my having them conversations with myself, I was able to think more clearly, and you know, um, and understand what I needed to do for myself and, and to get where I needed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I completely I completely hear what you mean by like you were never like literally, literally <laughs> yeah. by yourself. But like, you know, just, just the idea. And I ask that because like. You know, obviously you can always pick up, the, you know, the phone. You say you're blessed enough to be able to do that. You have friends, stuff like that. But at the same time, I feel like people still have lives to live. Right. And this, the, the biggest things that we want to accomplish as much of a blessing and as grateful as it is to be able to to call certain folks, you realize that some of the stuff is just a internal thing. Right. right? Like right, I got to, right. You know, it sucks. It's unfortunate. But I got to I got to be the one that kind of deals with this. You right. know what I mean? when it's you is just you when it's just yeah it's just, yeah. yeah yeah and and, and it's like that. but i think that you know it's funny i think that's where the real measurement of like greatness happens you know yeah, you're right because you know everyone always sees <laughs> the the posts on social media right everyone always right. sees the success the congratulations but they don't really see the right. the build up right they don't really see the the long nights they don't really see the the sacrifices and so that's why i think people who make it to like the top or people who reach their you know whatever their definition of greatness is um should definitely receive their flowers because it's like right you know definitely right. appreciate all the thank yous but the the, the moments y'all don't see that's what y'all should probably be you know hey, yeah hey the, yeah you're right man because you made me think about it man I, I miss like some people would call it miss out you know you miss out on a whole mm -hmm. lot of things you know as you chasing your dreams you know doing what you got to do and I remember them nights, you know, being being at the crib, probably on my phone, seeing friends, family that I know out, you know, enjoying life. Mm -hmm. While I was, I, I, I didn't really, you know, I ain't had that, you know, I wasn't doing too much of that because of the strictness of what I had to do. But, yeah. So I definitely understand exactly what you're saying, like, you know, because that when it's just you, only you know what it took to get to where you had to get mm -hmm. to, so for sure. Yeah. But you know what, though, too? Ab absolutely right. I'm glad we can con connect on that. So that's tough, yeah. right? So the idea of, like, let's say you're at the crib, you know what I'm saying? You study or whatever, and then you see people on Snap or IG party and turn up, and then you're like, damn. It, it hit you. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, trying to, you know, I'm trying to vibe. Right, but you right. kept going. But you know what, though, too? I think what's a little bit unique in this, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, is, like, you kept going, but you had um, uh, a finish line, if you will, right? So your finish mm -hmm. line was graduating and obviously that it doesn't just end there but of course you know it's it's easy after, or easier to keep going when you see some sort of finish line right but for someone that let's say they're trying to accomplish whatever right because the ultimate goal of going to school is to graduate right, right. but right. you know that but for some mm -hmm. people if they don't have a finish line or they don't have like an end goal it's very easy to just be distracted and be outside and all that so right. do you think that it actually helped you or it was a benefit that you had some sort of quote unquote finish line, right? Like regardless of how focused or whatever you may have been and disciplined, do you think it was actually a good thing that you had some sort of like, all right, here exactly is what I'm striving for graduation. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, because it, it, it made it like, it made it like I had no option, mm -hmm. you know, it was either I get it done or I don't. And I had to get it done. So, um, it yeah, it definitely made it. Like I said, I had to do it. I had to get it done. Um, mm. And it was the best thing for me um, because, like you said, you pointed out, it, when, you, when you have a goal, a specific goal that you know you got to reach or that you're trying to reach, you know, it, it kind of makes your, your focus different because you know exactly what you're trying to obtain. So, so yeah, it made it, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Talk to me, um, I guess, too, about um, the good times. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I want to acknowledge, of course, obviously, the overcoming of obstacles, because not everything is always, you know, peachy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we acknowledge, you know, 
when you post on social media the success, everyone congratulates you. But I just wanted to acknowledge the the possible potential hurdles for anyone out there that may be looking to tap into um, what it is that you're, that you're doing. But were there any moments where you were like either um, obviously, you know, excited or happy, but it's like, all right, you know what? This is how I know I'm meant to be doing this, right? Like this is like I am definitely on the path to, to, to continuing what I'm meant to do. Man, I mean, that was probably um, the the entire way, to be honest, even within <laughs> the dark times. That was happening the entire way because, uh, like I said, it, it was it was the motivation was my family being able to be something that they would be proud of, being able to help it, you know, my family. Um, so that was all that was the motivation for because if it was up to me, then I would have been dropped out probably man, mm. or or try to uh, change my major maybe, or maybe take a little longer. Cause I went through a six year program. Um, typically the pharmacy program is an eight year program. So I say that to say like, if it was up to me, I probably would have been like, man, look, this is a little too much. I'm gonna slow it down and maybe do an eight year route. But like I said, back to when I was like, I had no option. I, I gave myself no option. I had to do it whether I liked it or not. So. It, it was good times throughout all of that, man, because my parents kept telling me how proud they was of me, and my sister kept telling me, like, yo, because I used to probably call my sister more than my parents in terms of, like, telling her how hard it probably was. I ain't really tell my pops nothing like that because he would be like, man, you complaining. Yeah. But, you know, so I'll probably tell her, like, yeah, this is rough, you know, but she like, it's going to all pay off, you know, so, um, you know, it, it was good times throughout it all, man. You know, it was all good. Let me ask you them. Did you did you one hundred percent believe that statement at the time? What statement? That it'll all pay off. Yeah, no, I I I knew it was gonna pay off. I so I did, but I just it was it was a little agonizing because man, I I hated studying. So it was just that you know, it was school itself. Mm. That when you're in it, time fly by, man. Six years then came and went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I'm 20 I'm 25 now man you know me I we was at school when I was 14 you know? yeah, so yeah. there's been you know time flies so um but when you're in it it don't it don't fly like mm-hmm. when you're actually in it then when you finish you look back man time flew but when you're in it it's slow so that was just the the, the agonizing part man because damn you know it was moving slow while you were alone too you know that feeling of loneliness like we touched on earlier so that it get heavy but yeah, stuff like that. But Damn, it's kind of it's kind of heavy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's true. It's just that's yeah. very, very true. You yeah. know, people always say, you know, time flies, but when you're in the moment, it it don't. It's, it's there. You <laughs> there. Um, but you know that that I feel like that can be um good and bad. You know, depending right. on obviously what the situation is. Right, right, but, right. But you know, it's like you gotta take advantage of it. So even even in saying that though, what what do you feel like with the way um our generation and and culture is right, like do you feel that we should take advantage of the times that we're in, you know, and, and just the idea of like, you know, people still being young. Cause there's always that dynamic, right? Cause you mentioned, right. Like, you know, you have to study, stay in the crib and study, but at the same time you see other people, you know, on social party and whatever. Um, do you feel like choices have to be made? Like, yeah, but, yeah. like, can, can, can you, can you, can you live both lives? Like, can you, you know, obviously enjoy, but at the same time, get work done. See, the thing about that is, because then that's that's more so touching on people saying you got to have a balance, right? Yeah. You, know, you got to have a balance, you know. As long as you taking care of business in school, it's okay to, you know, party. It's okay to go out, you know. It's okay to do whatever, you know. Yeah. That's that's true, but the, the, there's a big part of me that thinks that um, the balance is so when certain things, you know, depend on what you want to do, you can't, that's having one foot in, one foot out, you mm-hmm. know, with the whole balance talk, you know, um, if, you know, the balance to having, how can I say it, you know, you got to find balance in the, in the imbalance, in my mm-hmm. opinion, because in order to get some things done, you can't, you, you, act, you actually have to be fully invested into that and sacrifice the rest. And, and find balance in that, you know, mm. um, I wish I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah, I, I'm I got you, it right. I got yeah, I got you. yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen this guy, Shannon Sharp, you know, Shannon Sharp, former mm. NFL. He, he said something like that. He said, there's no balance to greatness, mm. you know, in order for guys like him and 
and, and even anybody successful, they you don't really see too much of the uh, I party just as much as I work. Yeah. More more than that, you see them really working and partying later, maybe you know stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, and and I mean, I mean, my thing is like, there's nothing wrong with waiting, right? So right. I think when we talk about this balance between work and life, I think if you're really trying to reach a certain goal, right, mm-hmm. you work your ass off until you reach it, and then it's like, all right, now we can relax. Right. If you have a certain number or goal or, you know, achievement in mind, you know, in my opinion, work like crazy until you reach it and then relax. But I think what happens is I think people kind of do it in reverse. It's like you, it's like you kind of look ahead and they are. I have a long term goal, but because I'm so far off, oh, I might as well party or I might as well go out tonight. But in reality, you know, again, but to your point, though, everyone um, lives their life and and does what it is that they want to do. Right, teach his own, you know. Yeah, right, than, yeah. It's, you know, it's, yeah. You know, um, and you, you learn along the way regardless. So, so yeah. Good. Yeah. So even if, you know, we talk about things like to each his own and everyone, you know, should live their own lives and, um, you know, you do what's kind of best for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever, like, did, did it take time for you to kind of figure yourself out, if you will? Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, it was a time – it was a time, I don't know when, in college, but I ended up having a more clear understanding of what was for me and what wasn't for me. Um, I ended up making certain, I ended up cutting certain things off, you know, that I was probably entertaining that, you know, before I had that, had that realization. Um, so with that being said, you know, becoming more in tune with myself, uh, understanding the importance of staying on the straight and narrow as much as I could. Um, and, and like, I, like I said, even earlier, like, you know, really holding on to and, and, and making it a point to, um, to not do it for me, but to do it for, you know, my family. Um, and, and that's kind of what, yeah, that, and that's what makes me, me, I feel like to this day, you know, cause I'm not, it's not about me at the end of the day, even to this day, even though I'm, here where I am, you know, at the moment. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And so, you know, I know you mentioned, right, that's the thing that drives you yeah, and motivates yeah. you to, to kind of keep going and things like that. What, what do you think, or what would you say to them right now? The people that motivate you, what would you say to them right now? Because you know they're going to watch it. So what, what would you say to them right now? What, hmm. what would be the thing that um, you mentioned to them? First off, you know, thank you. You know, especially to my mom and my my mom and dad, because like I said, they they kind of made a decision for me mm. to to even take this type of route, because um, uh, it was the best thing for me. You know, whether I understood that in the beginning, I well, I didn't understand in the beginning actually, but I, I thank them for that push. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah. So thank you, and you know, I appreciate you always. Mm. So that's all for sure. Yeah. And, you know, you, you mentioned just the overall, you know, highs and like, the highs of um, reaching the point you're at now. Right. Um, but so what exactly you would think this is an obvious question, but I want to ask you anyway, what exactly does a pharmacist do? So basically to summarize it, we um, we serve communities. Um, people who need their medications. So we're the ones who supply them with the medications, whether it be, you know, uh, you got different medications like um, your maintenance medications, like your blood pressure, you know, those who need medications to keep their blood pressures in check, uh, diabetes medications, uh, all types of different edu- uh, medications, epileptic medications, pain medications. Um, yeah, let's goes on. A whole bunch yeah. of medications, yeah. Yeah. Work. But so how, how's it feel too to be a part of something in um, an industry where you're legitimately helping people, right? Like yeah. it's not just, you know, work, like some, you know, people are legitimately benefiting from what you're doing. Right. Right. It, it, it feels good. And, and, you know, to be able to help make sure that people are okay. Um, and if, and if, you know, I'm from being honest, you know, you, this, you know, I'm, I'm a pharmacist, but I'm all for, living a certain way, taking care of yourself a certain way so that you can actually avoid, you know, being a customer of a pharmacy. And it's, it's kind of 
some people would be like, that's a little against the grain of your profession, but, you know, being, you know, that's part of my job as well. That's the truth, you know, um, you know, cause I'm here to, you know, you know, uh, get people to optimal health, you know? So if I could talk about optimal health, then that's, that's, that's part of it for sure. Mm. Yeah. That, that, you know, that's a good point, right? I don't even know. I didn't think of it that, but mm-hmm. um, this idea of like, you know, prevent prevention, you know, b- before, you know, just the overall treatment and in, in any aspect, right. It's like, right. you know, before you even reach that stage, like, all right, I need this in order to get better. What can be done to straight up, you know, avoid, you know, any, you know, possible harm to your, to, to, to your, uh, to your body. So, and when we talk about, you know, medical and all that, have you noticed um, there being any type of correlation? I don't know if like pharmacists have access to like income status of other people or like finance, you know, other folk, folks' finances, but have you ever noticed some sort of like correlation between a person's overall medical uh, well-being versus their financial well-being or like whether it's something mental versus their financial well-being or like people not being able to afford certain things has has there ever been that dead dynamic that came across you at all oh yeah big time and, and i definitely think is a a huge yes yeah, it's, it's a big time correlation with with financial status and health status and mental status that all is connected big time um especially in our in our community you know the black community um you see that a lot man you know more times than not, you in a lower income area, probably dealing with certain health issues that others in a higher, you know, financial bracket don't deal with, you know. Uh, and that 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 alone goes to, you know, that that goes to the the foods we eat, um, you know, what we're exposed to, all type of things, man. Uh, so it's it's directly, I think, is big time correlation for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sad but true you know it's my job i gotta ask, ask a question like that but just like because you know because again with you know us two being being young and i know that the majority of my audience is a little bit on the on the younger side at the same time you know it's not a secret that what we do in our 20s can mm-hmm. affect our life in our 50s and 60s 60s right. um but with access to information right with access to you know people like yourself um just the idea of like okay living a better lifestyle. And, and there's so many things in life that people have to stay on top of, right? Like right. Your financial well-being, your mental, your physical, your relationship, you know, spiritual, all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's important. So right. ha, ha, <clears throat> have you kind of learned, um, obviously being in pharmacy, you learn like about how to, you know, become pharmacist and, every, pharmacist and everything like that. But right. have you learned the behavioral traits of other people now? Right. Do you look at things from a completely different perspective? Mm. Man, uh, I might need you to break that question down a little more. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So yeah. like, so, so I'm, I'm trying to think, all right, so perfect. I'll use myself and, and, and let me know if this, this helps you out. Right. So as a financial literacy advocate, um, I wasn't always like this. Right. So I'm not saying I would spend money on dumb stuff, but right. you know, when you're young, you're young, you know what I'm saying? You might spend money on some, you know, some sneakers and stuff like that. But now that I'm older, it's like, all right, that's bread that, that could be used elsewhere. But that's because I just think differently now because of all my experiences in the financial literacy world. Okay. Right. Yeah. So for you, right, whether it's within you yourself or someone that you may have worked with, do you now notice like, okay, I'm thinking differently because of my experience in this specific field in this industry as a whole? Man, all right, so I got you. Yeah, yeah, big time. But I, I that that kind of came when I was still in school. Mm. Um, to be honest with you, man, uh, I ended up getting into really caring about my health while I was in school, and I never really thought about that at all. And then, um, you know, I wasn't, I'm, I, I wouldn't consider myself ever to be having um, unhealthy or anything like that. But uh, I don't know. Basically, one one day, randomly, I just watched a couple of videos. I don't know if you heard of Dr. Sevy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, one, one Saturday, I just was watching his videos all day and he's kind of, you know, already know he's against what, what I'm, you know, into, but mm-hmm. it just opened my eyes a little more into the importance of uh, what you're putting into your body, um, you know, your health. So, um, and, it, and it, it helped me as well with the pharmacy because then it made me more interested into 
learning more about medications and what they're supposed to do and you know gave me both sides you know so um but yeah so as a result of that it changed my perspective and it definitely made me more conscious of you know my health and because health you know you, you know the saying you know health is wealth so uh, yeah it made me more yeah but so what does that mean to you too the fact that you were like open enough to experience and um digest a little bit other ideas that may have been different from yourself or just you know people in your position yeah I think that's important man to to be able to be open to receive new information even if it totally is against what you've already thought you know um there was some time along the way where I uh told myself too and a lot of there's a lot of aspects where I had to unlearn and relearn you know that was one of those aspects you know because um you know you'll be surprised you know what you thought was right was actually not necessarily right the whole time so Mm -hmm. I think it's important to keep that open mind so yeah and even now right like you, you you graduated you're doing what you have to do but do you feel like um like you still want more right do you feel like um, you know, you're still trying to continue to be a sponge and learn as much as you can. Um, and, 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 and how's that? Because, you know, sometimes you know, people feel like, all right, once you graduated, <laughs> I graduated. So I don't There's a reason why, you know, you, you know, you, you completed your program and everything like that. But at the same time, right now, you, you're learning, I feel like, in a different way. Right. Yeah. Also through experience. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely, man. I, it's one of those things where, uh, like you touched on earlier, you know. In college, I knew what the finish line was, and I was graduating, becoming a pharmacist. You know, now uh, it's that same type of thing where I, um, I'm I'm where I am now, but I'm I'm still think I'm still excited to see what's next. But I just, at this moment, I just don't know what that would be, because um, uh, even though I I just started my career, a lot of people will be like, "Hey, man, you got nothing else to think about, man. You and your career, you do this to to you, you know, to us all over with." But no, you know, I want more like, you know, yeah, for sure. But to be honest with you, if you don't mind me saying, I think that's the reason why you're you are where you are is because as thankful as you might be for, you know, the, the things that you've been able to accomplish, the mentality of like, all right, I know what I've done, but I still want to, um, you know, accomplish more. And I think, you know, there's always that interesting dynamic between like being thankful for what you have, but at the same time wanting more. Right. right. So I am extremely, extremely, you know, blessed to be able to say that I've done what I've done. But at the same time, I also know what I'm capable of. And I don't really have a, a roof. You know, I don't have a, a, a limit. If you no will, ceilings. Right. right. There, yeah. No ceilings. There we go. Like, right. I'm thankful for everything that I've accomplished in my life. But at the same time, I don't have a ceiling. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can make the case that even though some people might tell me like, oh, you know, good job. Congratulations. I'm just getting started. <laughs> Yeah, hey, you right. <laughs> That's how I felt too, man. You know, the whole congratulations is nice and all, but like you said, when you know what you want for yourself and, and you know your potential, you're not gonna be satisfied with just that, even though others may view that as man, you at you know, that, yeah, but yeah. And honestly, and I see when you think about it, like the word congratulations in itself is actually fuel. Because if a lot of people are telling you, like, oh, congratulations, good job, but internally you think to yourself, I really haven't done much, in my opinion. That just right. means I gotta feel me. I gotta turn up even more. Yeah, yeah, man. And and this, what you just said is actually deeper than a lot of people mm. understand because with the, being a doctor, you know, you know, being a doctor, having that, you know, title, right? You know, I got a whole lot of that. You know, a lot of people were like, "Man, you know, you're doing something that you know is crazy." You know, in my head, is you know, is it, is it, that's cool you know it's cool but it's not it's not you know in my eyes it's, it wasn't uh that important to me to be honest you know uh you know there's more things I want to do there's there's even just not necessarily um like things you can touch but internally yeah. there's places where you know I want to go you know as a man you know so you know I definitely understand exactly what you're saying yeah yeah so watch this. So what's the one thing, if you have one, that'll, that you can do or you feel like you accomplish that'll make you really take a step back and say, you know what, I'm him. What, what, what's the one thing that'll, that'll make you feel like, you know what? And again, you know, ain't nothing wrong with 
bragging at, at you know being thankful what you have. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, if, right. if if you had to, if you had at least one thing, right? If it was like okay, because you know whether everybody got a you know a championship is is for most people like their their thing, yeah. right? Or if I'm like the top of my class, or if I make X amount of money, or if I make um, if I start this business by this date or, or whatever. So mm-hmm. do you have anything where it's like, okay, you know what? If I get that, y'all can't tell me anything. <laughs> y'all, you know what I mean? <laughs> then I can say congratulations. <laughs> right. That's funny. Oh man. I don't even know. I could even tell you, bro. I honestly don't know. Um, mm. You'll find it someday. And when you do, let, 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 let me know. Hey man, catch me sis. Catch me saying course side. Catch me saying course side or something. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm that good. Cool. I'm that dude for real. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and I and you know, it's it's funny like your mindset and it, and, it, and I think it's so important because again, I think we're in a very very interesting era. So a lot of like young people, I feel like, are attaining success, right? And that's obviously a great and wonderful thing. But I think the right. definition of success, if you notice, is always different amongst different people, for right? Sure. So. Have you ever faced a moment where like, all right, you're surrounded by other people who may make you feel like the success, quote unquote, that you have is nothing in comparison to them. And if you have, right, how, 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 how has that made you feel? So whether it was on your journey to become a pharmacist and you were around other people who have already done it, right? H- has that happened to you? Man, no, nah, I, I can't say that it has, man, because, uh, you know, with my journey, uh, my fellow classmates that I graduated with, it's kind of we always going through the same thing. Mm. You know, even if you pass this one test, this person fail this one test, the next test, you may fail that test and they pass the other test. You know, so yeah. it, it was all a, it was never nothing like that. I know. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, college is always interesting because, you know, it gives you the chance to hang around or right. be around, excuse me, other people that either think like you or are striving for the same goal as you. Right. right. And have you noticed um, a difference in that, a shift like post college? Um, you know, just the idea of like, obviously, you know, when you're on campus, everybody's your age, everybody, you know what right. I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah um, for sure. Granted that, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, be, being that one for one big reason, uh, out of all my peers that graduated, I was cool with. I'm the only one still in Louisiana. Like they, all my other friends was from different states. So they went back to the, went back home, you know? So just in that aspect alone, yeah, it's, it's definitely a difference from when I was in school. Um, but like I said, you know, earlier when we talked about the, the moments where, you know, it was just you, it was just, you know, mm-hmm. you to yourself. I feel like that was needed, you know? I feel like mm-hmm. that was for a reason because, you know, now I'm, I'm here, you know, I got my family around still, but. Right. Is it prepared me for moments like where go go to work, go home. It's just you, you know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what though is good because you got that out the way, I feel like early on. Like some people right. don't get to experience that or even still, you know, struggle with that later on in their life. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think the sooner you deal with certain things, the better. Right, right, right. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so um being in a completely different state, obviously, you know, Louisiana versus um Connecticut, how important do you feel it is for people to at least experience life outside of their home state? Maybe not live there, maybe not even go to school there, but just the idea of like, all right, life is bigger than just the one city or the one state that you're in. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a it's a it's a blessing to be able to have experience being in a um, spending time in a different state, and I think it's important for you know for anybody to experience that. Uh, for one, being that usually when, you know, you're like, you know, being from uh, where we're from, a small city, um, Connecticut, you know, a lot of people around the country would be surprised don't even know what Connecticut is first time, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. uh, you know, being from something like that, especially, um, it's where you're comfortable. So, you know, I feel like your most growth comes from when you're in your most uncomfortable moments. Mm-hmm. So, if you're able to experience going to school, spending some time away from home, it could do you a lot of good, you know, because now you're, it's a different environment. You've got to make an adjustment and, you know, and it made me more responsible. I, I was away, you know, so I didn't have mom and dad to make sure I was doing the right thing. It was up to me to do the right thing, even though there's a whole bunch of influences that may have been trying to pull me in other directions, you know, so 
like I said, you know, you grow a lot, you know, when you, when you, uh, ex- you know, take a step out of where you're from. Yeah. So. And how have you remained uh, level-headed? Because, I mean, obviously, as long as I've known you, you know, you, you never gave off, like, cocky vibes. This idea of, like, you know, obviously when good things happen to you, that's always a blessing. But when things may not go your way, it is what it is. You got to battle through it. But how, do you feel like you've had somewhat of a mellow mentality throughout the way? Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, even though – you know, all my life, you know, it was probably, you know, people, some people probably, you know, gave me props, you know, uh, but um, it, it it don't mean nothing. You know, the most important thing is, you know, who type of person you are. And I feel like ever since I was a kid, I had that in my conscience to be just a good person, you know, respect yeah. people. Um, and, you know. Um, you not you know it don't matter what you achieve you mean you, you you you're not more than anybody else and like I pointed out earlier you know I didn't do this for me I, I really I, I literally did it for my family you know it, it made me think about like uh when I posted the graduation picture you know because you know everybody graduated you gotta post a picture <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let people know you gotta oh, get some man. you gotta get some love you know man, so you gotta like it's mandatory I hear you though you're absolutely you know? right Man, you, you know the caption was you know remove myself from the equation i had to make it happen you know mm. so this is the point out again you know i probably went over some people had they probably thought that meant like you know me remove myself from the scene you know mm. to lock in and get this job done but it really meant just removing myself from the from the dynamic it wasn't about me anymore it was a, it was about my family so that like i said that makes me who i am that keeps me level-headed that keeps me humble because at the end of the day, it, it don't matter what's next. Like, forget me. You know, forget how I feel in the moments. Like, we talked about where I didn't feel like studying, you know, the moments where I felt like quitting, all that type of stuff. I had to tell myself, yo, forget how you feel because it's not about you, you know. So mm-hmm. that keeps me grounded, man, because it ain't about you at the end of the day. So, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, it's bigger than you as an individual. And you know what? That is right. a, a perfect, perfect segue. Um, which leads me or is going to lead me to my final question, yeah. right? So obviously, you know, we've known each other, um, went to, to school with one another. So we've known each other for a while. Um, you mentioned, I think now I think about it, you've gone to, you went to three different high schools, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Went, went to, went to college um, out of state, you know, pharmacy. Um, and even now you mentioned you finished a, a six year program in eight years. Right. Right. right? The, and, you know, just the idea of, um, you know, we talk about the age gap and just um, starting and doing something that may not be as common, you know, for people that look like you. Right. Mm-hmm. But just the idea of like, hey, you still got it done. The idea of like, um, you know, it's bigger than you. Right. It's, it's bigger than you as an individual. You do it from your family. That's where the motivation is. Um, life isn't always, you know, going to give you highs. But at the same time, you deal with um, you deal with it. Right. right and right, right. You, you've had your just me moments um that doesn't make you selfish that doesn't make you a loner but you know you're you're a man and it's crazy that's it, it's crazy they say that you know for those of y'all listening like because we've known like it's crazy i remember you literally being a freshman which is crazy <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know you're, you're a man now right and just the idea right, of like right. the growth has been required um and mandatory right? Right, right um but i say all that right you know just to to um you know kind of summarize your story a little bit but even still because it leads to the final question that I have for you. And it's a question that I ask everyone that's ever been on Define Your Legacy. And that question is, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, as, a, as, a, as a good dude, man, as a, as a guy who was respectful, um, that, that treated everybody the same, uh, a guy that never faked it, mm-hmm. um, a guy that cares about his family, uh, you know, and, and and just wanted to, you know, do right by people at the end of the day and, uh, you know, and and help others, you know, and and help, you know, being be, lead by example. You know? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Be a, yeah, for sure. For sure, man. And, and I think you're definitely doing that. You know, and I always I like to ask that question because, you know, as much as we talk about financial literacy and business and dream chasing and all that, um, we all, unfortunately, we all have a deadline. Right. And it's a deadline that we don't come up with ourselves, you know, but when that deadline comes, when that appointment is here, it's, it's time. And so I right. think it's important to make the most of 
our time while we're on this earth. That's why I think it's so important to protect your energy, protect your time, because you really don't know when your last day is going to be. So um, entertaining garbage is <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? Life, life is too precious to um, waste your energy on things that don't really matter at the end of the day. So, um, but again, man, I, I just want to say, you know, thank you, you know, for being on the show, man, in all seriousness, you know, it's, I think it's different between, you know, us as being um, friends as well as teammates to now have, you know, this conversation from, you know, hosts to guests and everything like that. So it, it's been a dope conversation. I already know people out there are going to get something out of it, but if you could, man, um, you know, leave your social media, if you don't mind, right. Like where people can find you um, and everything like that. If they may have questions or just want to reach out if that's, if that's cool with you. Yeah, no, most definitely. But first, man, I just want to definitely, uh, you know, give you your props, man, you know, and tell you that, you know, I appreciate everything, you know, you're doing because with your platform, you know, you little do you know, you know, um, you influenced me during my journey, man. I was seeing you working with the NBA, working with Slam, and and I'm looking at that like that made me go harder in my lane. Like, I kid you not. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing too, thank you. man. And, thank you, thank you. Because know, you're not only touching me, man, you're touching other people as well, man. So appreciate I'm glad that, you know, I appreciate you inviting me on this uh, platform, man. Of course. Had this discussion with you, for sure. Um, but yeah, man, uh, my social media platform, uh, Instagram, you know, you can find me at uh, 2G Fats, uh, T-O-O-J-I-F-A-T-S. And uh, I got a Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter, man, but. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, Instagram, yeah. For sure, for sure. Got you on, on IG. Um, and on the defining legacy front, yeah, you already know we got we got a, we got a long rundown for housekeeper items. All right. So subscribe yeah. to Theus Elijah on YouTube. All right. Subscribe to Defining Legacy on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. Okay. So follow Defining Legacy with an underscore at the end on Instagram. Follow DYO Podcast on Twitter. Define your legacy on Facebook. And last but not least, everyone's favorite app, This Elijah on TikTok. All right. Um, and you already know by now, okay, all episodes of Define Your Legacy drop Thursday mornings at 8.24 a.m. Eastern. All right. All episodes of Define Your Legacy drop Thursdays at 8.24 a.m. Eastern. All right. Um, and so do you have um, any, any final words, man, that you want to leave our uh, audience with, man? Hey, man. Uh just to bring it back to the money tip, since, you know, you're big on the financial literacy, I would just say, hey, man, uh, it ain't about the money, but get the money at the end of the day to all my people. You know, that's, you know, it ain't about the money, so don't, but still get the money. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. There's, there's a comma. Yeah, there's a comma. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Right, but, saying. but you know what, though, that, that, that is so true, because at the end of the day, as important and viable as money is, it's still just a piece of paper. Right. right. It's still currency. I think it's more of what the money can get you. And right. so I think of it as like, all right, as much as you might want money, what is it that you ultimately want that's behind it? You know what I'm saying? So I think when you start focusing and chasing on that, everything else will kind of work itself out. Um, and so, you know, even being the, you know, the financial literacy advocate that I am, it's like as, as much as people may not talk about money in their household, it's also something that you can't really avoid. Right, right. Whether you right. have it at the household, the school system, you know, wherever, at some point you realize you're going to have to, you know, do your own research and, and, and initiate conversations about it. So, um, but yeah, you know. But hey, hey, man, the, I might have to have another conversation with you about some finances, to be honest, man, because I'm I just, you know, I'm fairly new to the job. Yeah. Things on oh, for sure. Oh, oh, for sure. The minute this oh. recording is over, we can, <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can chop it up. Can, yeah, oh, man. Oh. You know, like yeah. I said, as 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 the host, and you know, I like to ask questions. And like I told you before we started recording, this is this is your episode. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm a guy that try my best. You know, you know, we gonna, we gonna stay in the lane and let it be about you. But once yeah. once um you know once it's over, trust we 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 can we, yeah. we can chop it up and everything like that. Yeah, um, man. yeah. Sorry, y'all. For those y'all listening, you can't get the the, the sauce <laughs> out of the. <laughs> but yeah, um, what's that? What's that? But again, man, uh, uh, on the real, definitely. Thank you again for being on the show. Um, for, for those of y'all listening out there, make sure um, you define your legacy, right? As, yeah. as many episodes as we have about financial literacy, um, just start. You know, whoever needs to hear that today, just start. Start that business. Start that podcast. Go back to school if you have to. Um, invest your first $100, whatever the case may be. 
I'm going to plead y'all. Use this. This is your sign to just start. All right. And just like that, y'all, we gone. Peace.